Well, good morning to all of you. Uh, it's great to be alive, to be in the house of the Lord, and to be able to speak with, with those of you who are uh, out of my eyesight, but not out of my, uh, out of my hearing. The message this morning is break through the hesitation barrier. I've used Luke chapter 11, verses 5 through 10, and John chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. John chapter 2, verse 5 says, do whatever he tells you. Hmm. Few persons feel the certainty expressed by uh, Rudyard Kim Kipling when, when he wrote, the gates are always mine to open. And we'd like to tell ourselves that's how we feel. But most of the time, we can't believe that it's really possible. This striking statement uh, coming from the mother of Jesus. Do whatever he tells you. Uh, that was the part of the, the initiation of his first miracle. It was to, to the embarrassment and, uh, of, the, of the party givers and uh, these servants that were working all around. And, uh, all of a sudden, they run out of the good stuff. You know, the circumstances are familiar and understandable. Uh, when your son or daughter marries, uh, the parents not only share in the joy, but they're quite often responsible for making sure that uh, the guests are well cared for. So, the greater the resources, the more elaborate is the festival. And for a family, uh, a wedding is probably the greatest social event of the year, or maybe even for some for a lifetime. So the invited guests come, and they expect the best. And generally, they're not disappointed. As we all know, uh, pleasures as well as necessities don't happen without preparation on our part and, and the fulfillment of responsibilities on the part of others. So unbeknown to the bridegroom or his parents, the supply of wine was gone. And not wanting to, to concern the hosts with their disappointment, uh, the servants took it upon themselves to uh, attempt to solve the problem. To be honest, I don't think they knew, had a clue what to do or where to turn to. Where do you go for help when the barrel's empty? In their maze of confusion, one servant by chance uh, mentioned their anxiousness to the mother of Jesus. And with an understanding uh, mother's mind, she sought to help them by suggesting that they go tell Jesus about their problem. And they turned in haste to seek his help. Uh, and she told them boldly, whatever he said, just do it. You know, there's more people that are paralyzed, and I don't mean physically paralyzed, but mentally paralyzed by hesitation than the diseases of stroke, cancer, heart, or accidents combined. Hesitation is the number one crippler in the human dynamic. Men freeze, fall apart, give up in desperation as a result. The sins of omission seem to, to plague us even more severely than the sins of commission. 
we vividly uh, remember our unfulfilled ambitions. Regret sensitizes our, our memory and, and we uh, chastise uh, ourselves in the remorse of, why didn't I do that? You been there? Yeah. We fail to do whatever it was we wanted to do because of hesitation. Right now, there's a, there's a gate to be open, and we're standing back thinking, well, I don't know if I can do it. And to make matters even worse, our hesitations are, are set in concrete when reinforced by what we think is unreasonable, impractical, uh, and perhaps from the counsel of those that are close by us. The little courage and faith of the wedding feast servants was, was, was shattered, I'm sure, when they approached Jesus. And without explanation, he told them to, to fill some earthen jars with water. Jesus, it's the wine that's gone, not the water. Jesus, don't you understand? It's wine we need. Do we have to accept this water as a very poor substitute? Now, I, I think that time was of the essence. Perhaps these servants resigned themselves to think that, well, there's no wine here, uh, so we might as well take what we can get, even if it's far less than what we wanted or what we needed. You see, they, like us, anticipated the ordinary, the life as it is attitude, and they felt that they must make the best of it. If that was their attitude, then the miracle was accidental. But on the other hand, there could well have been the obedient response because Jesus' mother told them, do whatever he tells you. I can just hear one servant saying, ridiculous, ridiculous. Maybe another one said, let's not waste our time with that. So this built-in caution of so-called common sense tells us what's the use, what's the use. The battle is real. The opponent, hesitation, challenges courage and faith. The changing of the water into wine was not only the, the first miracle Jesus performed. It was the first miracle experience for men. They believed in him. They literally did what he told them to do. Miracles are only miracles when they transcend our human knowledge and defy our security in the sensible, uh, practical approach to life. To accept God's way uh, as superior to our way means that he can make a difference in our lives. He can make a difference. But isn't it strange that in the maze of our confusion oftentimes, the last place we go is God. The wedding servants uh, actually tried to solve their problem uh, by looking in every direction except coming to Jesus Christ. It was only after his mother's suggestion that, uh, that they made the approach. 
this would seem to indicate uh, uh, one of two things. Either we may think that God is disinterested in, in those matters that trouble us the most, or what good can God in religion do to solve these many troublesome practical problems? Problems that I have to live with. And yet God doesn't get involved by chance. It's always a response to our initiative or or the encouragement of others to, to seek his help. I remember hearing about a, a young boy who was deformed from birth with, a, with an extremely crippled leg. And he struggled through the physical embarrassment and mental anguish of one operation after another, one leg brace followed by several more. The, the struggle finally depressed him uh, to the point where his whole personality became one of, of bitterness and self-pity. His father suggested that they uh, must do something about his attitude and self-image. So it was decided to talk to their pastor. After a lengthy conversation in which the young boy poured out his bitterness, the minister asked that they go into the church and kneel at the altar and pray. And they did that. The pastor began, and then the father, finally the, the young lad. And when he said his amen, he jumped to his feet with a smile on his face and embraced his father. With tears of joy, he said, these stories get me sometimes. And the little guy said, God didn't take the brace off my leg. He took the brace off my mind. That's powerful. Powerful. The same crippled leg. George Mueller, maybe you've heard of him, uh, was a man who lived out uh, an aggressive courage uh, so desperately needed to break through the hesitation barrier. He had a deep, deep concern for uh, orphaned and delinquent children. He traveled all through the continent of, of Europe telling people everywhere of his vision to provide a place where abandoned and lonely children uh, could be fed, clothed, and loved. Often he was confronted with discouraging uh, response that his ideas were too costly. People hesitated to participate and, and to contribute financial aid. At one point, a friend asked him, said, George, why do you keep on trying and working so hard? To this, George Mueller responded with confidence. Don't limit with God what you seem to be is impossible. God makes the difference. That first miracle of, of Jesus performed at that, uh, at that um, marriage feast uh, in Cana. It kind of reaffirms uh, the realities about the lifestyle of us all. First, the atmosphere of confusion, an apparent loss of self-control when you're under pressure. We all been there. Confronted with the possibility of, of loss of health, family, or employment, we, like the, the wedding servants, uh, begin to panic. And then trying to regroup our senses, we strike out in, in many different directions, groping for answers or looking for help. 
all the while trying to solve our problems all by ourselves. Never, usually never at least, thinking that God could make a difference. The great and often first miracle has been repeated many times since that wedding in, in Cana. Whenever a person approached Jesus Christ with, with the acceptance that whatever he tells me to do, I'll do it. I'd like to say that. But the truth is I fail miserably. The first miracle God works in my life is the understanding what he is and what he says deserves my attention. The absence, absence of a miracle is always the result of a detached relationship with Jesus Christ. When people discover that what God says is important, then mighty things begin to happen. We then believe in the, in the rightness of, of events, uh, for our outcomes are the result of God's design and not man's push. So into this struggle uh, between the best endeavors of our common sense activity and, and the courage to believe and accept the presence of God uh, in, in human life comes the test of our center of trust. Who and what can you really trust? Part of the building of this hesitation barrier we're talking about is the result of an absence of certainty. We tend to forget so easily that the grass withers away, but the word of the Lord abides forever. There's always this ever-present challenge of priorities to, to do it my way or to find a better way. So, if I'm out of wine, I'm going to Riverside Market and get some. I'm going to cut to the chase. I know where it's at. I'm going to the supplier and buy more. But God's way says, fill those jars. Fill those jars. And the result astonishes us. That you've saved the very best for life. Remember the nobleman came to, to Jesus for a cure for his son. He receives no medicine, no healing clothes, or even the assurance that Jesus will physically come and touch the sick boy. But in John chapter 4, verse 50, Jesus said, go, your son will live. And with that statement, they went, went back home, joined in the celebration of the boy who was alive and well. And he was alive and well at the exact time that Jesus spoke of. So what makes the difference? And I'm, I'm, I'm quitting. What force helps us penetrate that uh, hesitation barrier? Well, I think I can sum it up in just one word. Obedience. Obedience. 
the awesome, sometimes uh, honestly uh, helpless feeling of going along with the elusive uh, yet overwhelming uh, effective uh, operational plan of God. We will never know that God's ways trans transcend man's ways until we humbly accept with obedience the willingness to try. Margaret Bruner wrote this many years ago. I found the task that I had dreaded so was not so difficult when once begun. It was dread itself that was the foe. And dread once conquered means a victory won. I like that. Let's remember this. You can do so much more through the power of Jesus Christ, which gives strength to each one of our lives. Father, thank you for this message this morning. I pray that it would be uh, beneficial to, to the hearers, Lord, and that uh, you would use it, Lord Jesus, to encourage us. In your precious name, Lord, we